Hey guys, welcome back to the beginner series. Today we're going to do a pack job on a Sapphire 3. Let's get started. So just to make a quick point about packing weights, today we're going to use a packing weight in this rig. Um, but when you're at a drop zone, it's actually good to learn to pack without a packing weight. That way, if you're somewhere else and one isn't available, you aren't stuck dragging your rig around the packing. So in our previous videos, we already covered stowing the brakes, uncollapsing the slider, changing rubber bands, and cocking the pilot chute. So we'll get straight into it with a continuity check. All right, so as we're walking the lines up, what we're doing is we're checking for any twists or step throughs that might have been put into the canopy lines uh, out in the packing area. So I want to run them all the way up, make sure everything's clear. Make sure my brakes are clear. Give it a little shake. All right, next up, we're going to step out of the lines. We're going to group them together. We're going to check, make sure our brakes are clear. Make sure our rears are clear. And then we're also going to take any excess slack out of the lines, drop it over the shoulder, and then just if necessary, making sure we've got all that slack. Now we've got it over our shoulder, we're going to count out the no cells. Being a Sapphire 3, we should be counting to nine. So we got one, four, ah, uh, ah, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So once we've got the no cells counted out, what we're going to do is we're going to stretch the canopy, give it a good shape, and then we're going to put it straight between the legs. So once we've got the nose between our legs, you've got a couple of options here. You can either flake the canopy with the slider down, or you can bring it up, put it over your shoulder. For this demonstration, I'm going to bring it up, put it on my shoulder so we can see a bit better what's going on inside the pack job. Now that we've got the slider up and out of the way, in the next part of the pack job, we're actually going to make sure that we're going to flake all of the canopy nicely. Whatever we do to one side, we're going to do to the other. Uh, the aim of the game here is to get all of the fabric out to the side and all our line groups running down the center of the pack job. We're going to get all our fabric out to the side of the canopy. So that's our A to B lines. Then we're going to come through. to our B to C lines, remembering to flake all the fabric out to the side, but remembering to keep those line groups towards the center of the pack job. And then here we're gonna do our C to D lines, again, making sure all that fabric's out to the side. The C to D line's done, we're just gonna tidy up the tail and the stabilizers. So again, we're just making sure that the fabric's not tucked inside anywhere. And all our stabilizer fabric is out to the side. Now we've finished with one side, we're going to move on to the other. We're going to do the exact same thing to keep our pack job nice and symmetrical. All right, so now that we have done flaking on both sides of the pack job, next up is the slider. So we're just going to bring that back down. We're going to make sure it's quartered properly. So we're going to make sure it's good front to back and also side to side. Make sure that our stabilizers haven't got tucked in anywhere. And then really important, make sure that slider's punched all the way down into the pack job. All right, so we're just gonna double check our slider, make sure it is actually presented to the wind. And one thing that I actually like to do right here is actually turn my grommets out so they're sitting flat. That way it's giving it a, a little bit extra presentation to the wind and it'll also help us when we're trying to bag the canopy because the grommets will be sitting nice and flat. All right, once we've got the slider sorted, next thing we're gonna do is double check the nose. Make sure it's nicely presented. Make sure it's not tucked all the way up inside the pack job. Making sure that one side isn't exposed more than the other, which can cause an uneven opening. Okay, so once we've got the nose sorted and the slider checked, what we're gonna do is wrap the tail around the canopy. But first, I'm gonna check, make sure that there's no slack in those lines behind me, because now would be a good time to fix that. For the next few steps, keeping tension through our line groups is gonna be really key to a good pack job. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure we're not taking any steps backward and we're not putting any slack into any of these lines. We're gonna lean forward, we're gonna find the tail. We're gonna follow that tail seam all the way along until we find the warning label. This is a good way to find the center of your canopy. So we always wanna aim for the center of the warning label. 
All right, as we're bringing the tail up around the canopy, what we want to do is just shuffle it up nice and gently. We don't want to try and undo anything we've already done. Bring it up, wrap it around the line group, and then we can take a, your thumb around the back and a little pinky on the warning label. And now we're going to bring the canopy around. So what we're going to do is just gently shuffle the tail around the canopy. One thing you don't want to do is a big wide sweep because what you'll do is pull your brake lines around and possibly put them in between your nose. Now we're going to do the same on the other side. And then turn the canopy. Because I've been packing over my right shoulder, it's actually going to be easier for me to turn it out to the left. But if you're packing on your left shoulder, then you might find it easier to turn it to your right, but it's completely up to you which one you want to do. So now I've got it up gonna hold the tail between two fingers and then I'm gonna look for the seam here and then I'm basically gonna try and match it up all the way down keeping a nice firm grip making sure that I'm not stepping back or putting any slack in the lines once we've matched up our seams next thing we're gonna do is put a couple of wraps in the tail I actually like to use my left thigh as a bit of a board to work against but what I'm gonna do is simultaneously with both hands put a couple of nice tight turns into the tail and then I actually put a little bit more of a wrap down the bottom. I like to do about two full wraps on the tail of the canopy, any more than that, and actually start pulling the brake lines out and around the canopy, which we don't want to do. So now we're going to put the canopy down on the ground, and we can do this without throwing the pack job at the floor. So what we can do is if you take your thumb and your index finger around the, the warning label, keep in tension on the lines. So around on this side, I'm using my index finger and thumb again to hold that wrap down the bottom. At this point, I'm gonna take the pack job off my shoulder, keep in tension on the lines, holding a firm grip down the bottom. And then now, instead of throwing it on the ground, I'm actually just gonna lay the canopy out nice and gently. That way I'm not undoing any of the nice flaking that I've just done. Now we've got the canopy on the ground. If the D-bag's underneath the pack job, it's no big deal. What we can do is give a little tutu on the old uh, bridle line there and just bring that out nice and gently. And that way we haven't disturbed the pack job. And while you're down here, you might as well check, make sure those lines haven't moved and you've still got good tension. Before we bag the canopy, it's always good to double check, make sure your pilot chute is cocked all the way. That way we won't have any problems with it later. When we're bagging the canopy, one of the key things to remember is try not to undo any of the good work that we've already done. So at this point, although we're gonna be putting the canopy in the bag, we still wanna be as gentle as possible with it. First up, what I'm gonna do is just get my knee onto the, onto the warning label on the lines. That way my slider's not gonna come down and everything behind me is gonna stay tension. So next up, we're gonna to need to reduce the size of the canopy so it's gonna fit into the D-bag. We're gonna do this by squeezing all the excess air out of the canopy. So when working with the fabric on the canopy, we're gonna to wanna to do all forward motion. But as we do it, as we squeeze some air out, just go as slowly as the canopy wants to release the air. If you push down too hard too quick, we're gonna blow the pack job out. So we're just gonna keep repeating the same steps, squeezing the air out of the canopy. I like to get most of the air out before I start trying to make the pack job any narrower. So I'm just gonna work all the air out of the canopy. Once you're happy with that, what we're gonna do is reach around on the sides of the canopy and we're gonna start making it narrower. We're just gonna bring our hands together what we're aiming to do is actually grab a hold of the roll that we initially put on the tail of the canopy. So although I'm holding it firmly, I'm not death gripping it to the point where anything is coming apart. Once it starts getting narrower, we can start working a little bit down towards the warning label. What we're aiming for is something about as wide as the D-bag. Now I'm dressing up the tail. Again, bringing everything back into the center. Once that's done, we're ready to put it in the bag. 
Now we're ready to start making our folds in our canopy. First we're going to do an S fold down the bottom. So in here, making sure our grommets are far enough into the pack job that we're not going to get squeezed out when we do the next fold. But when I put my knee on the pack job, I'm not putting my full force down. It's probably about 70% on my left leg, 30% on my right. It's just there to hold the fold in place. I'm not using it to squeeze any air out. Now we've got the first fold in place, we're gonna do the next fold. So we're gonna get right underneath that pack jaw. And my left hand is aiming for, again, uh, where we wrapped the tail previously. So once I've got a hold of that, I'm gonna do a knee swap with my hand. I'm gonna use both knees to contain the side of the canopy, make sure it's not squeezing out. And then I'm just gonna bring that canopy up and over the top. And then I'm gonna use a combination of both hands and both arms to bring that pack job together. And again, you don't need to rush this. If you feel like you are rushing and the canopy is getting away from you, chances are it's already too late and you may have to start again. So you should be able to have the pack job resting nice and easily on top of it. So if we have a quick look down at where the warning label is, my grommets are still inside the fold of the canopy, nothing spilling out towards the front. So now we've got the canopy where we want it, we're gonna put it into the bag, but try and think a bit more about putting the bag around the canopy. That way we're not gonna be pushing the pack job any uh, side to side or anything like that, and making sure we're not undoing the good work that we've just done. So there's a few different ways that you can put a canopy in the bag, but uh, for today we're gonna to be using this technique that I'll show you right here. Gonna use my left arm to control the pack, uh, pack job. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the flap of the D-bag underneath and I'm gonna put my right knee on it. Super key to have your right knee stay there, otherwise this technique uh, doesn't work so well. But then I'm gonna put put the right hand side of the canopy into the bag and then I'm going to hand swap and then I'm going to take my right hand to the top uh, left hand side of the D-bag and then use my left hand to just squeeze that canopy into the side bringing the canopy into the bag so once the canopy is in the bag we're going to move around to this side of the D-bag a uh, good tip here is you can actually use your body weight to bring the rubber bands down to the closing grommets rather than trying to stretch those rubber bands out. So what I do is I'm just going to roll the bag down. I'm going to take my first rubber band, pop it through the first grommet. Make sure I've got tension on my lines. I put my first stow in. So for all the stows on the bag, we're gonna use large rubber bands and double stow. So now we're gonna to wanna to check the size of our line stows, make sure they're not too big or too small. Good little trick you can use is actually use your fingers. We go two to three fingers is a good size for your stow. Now that we've got our locking stows all done, what we wanna do is just dress the bag a little bit. Just make sure any excess fabric sticking out is just neatly put into the bag like so. Now we're just going to work our way back down the line set, making all of our stows, remembering to keep them nice and neat. Little tip for doing your line stows here, just hold them firmly in your right hand, take the rubber band, place the rubber band on, hold it still. Done. Once we get down to the last stows of the bag, what we need to do is make a decision on how much excess to leave on the bag. What we can do is use your tip of your elbow to the tip of your finger to make sure that there's at least that much excess. So if you're ever unsure, you can bring it down as if you were gonna make the stow and then judge how much excess you're gonna have left. Now that we've got our line stows done and we're happy with our excess, we're gonna go ahead and close the container. And what we're gonna do is just follow the manufacturer's recommendations for doing that. All right, that finishes our pack job. Thank you for joining us today. Hopefully you learned something new and picked up some tips and tricks for packing your parachute.